Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're in the kitchen and I'm going to show you how you can still preserve your food even if you don't have a garden. But I will still give you some tips and tricks that you can do if you are living in an apartment or anything like that. But know that you can still preserve food and get ready for what might come down the pipes, which uh, is looking a little bit more clear and clear every single day. So, so let's preserve some food and we'll have some fun doing it together. So some of you could be experiencing a, uh, a little bit of a dilemma where you feel like you can't start a garden and you see the things that are happening in this world and stuff like that. We've got many options at this point right now if you do things now. But first I will say the biggest investment I want you to know is that you're going to be investing in a canner, a pressure canner. Okay, so they come in different sizes and things like that. And you can also do it with the electric one. They have the electric ones too, so you don't have to do it on the stovetop. And uh, so, but some people are kind of intimidated when it comes to the pressure canner. I'll admit I was too in the beginning, but as I keep using this, I'm gaining more and more confidence and I know you will too. So before we get into what we're gonna can today, I'm gonna tell you that if you live in an apartment or you know a small little cul-de-sac or wherever you're living at, okay, and if you feel like you're, you don't have the space to start a garden, there is, there is uh, other ways that you can still grow some food. Uh, one of the ways is by taking garden boxes or making garden boxes and putting them on your balcony, um, you know, or just in a little space that you might have outside of your apartment. Um, even talk to, you know, a few of the other tenants that are there to see if you all want to get together and go talk to the manager of the building and find out if they would do a community garden for the for the um, for the apartment complex uh, you know things like that 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 uh, if if community joins together you can possibly you know do stuff like that um, but other ways well okay you can also go looking for your local farmer there's many farmers out there that are selling produce on the side of the road or, you know, at the end of their driveway. They have a little fruit stand, fr vegetable and fruit stand. Um, you know, you can always purchase fresh produce from them. And I'm sure they'd appreciate it because with the way distribution has been going on, there's a lot of food that's being wasted uh, due to not being able to get their, 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 their crops out. So go around and look for those if you're still not in a position to be looking for a local farmer go to your local grocery store and start buying some frozen vegetables even the fresh vegetables and start canning those things you can purchase books on amazon or at your local library go to your local library make copies if you can't afford to even buy the book make copies of the pages of canning so i'm sure that there's canning books that are in your local library where you can take a photocopy of the recipe and how to do it and bring it home with you so today we're going to be doing corn i bought four of their biggest bags of corn and I put them in the sink here and I'm letting them, letting them, sorry, letting them defrost. So they've been in the sink for a couple hours already. And, but it's fresh corn. It's also been blanched so that you could, so that the company could freeze it, right? So you don't have to go into the trouble of blanching the, the, the food when it's frozen. So you can can, you can can. <laughs> frozen vegetables, uh, things of corn, peas, carrots, of that nature. There's recipes where you can also can your asparagus and can potatoes. If you see potatoes, big bags, 15, 20, 25 pound bags of potatoes on special like I did, even though I'm growing potatoes, I'm still going to grab a $5 bag of 15 pound potatoes and I'm going to can them as well so you can get potatoes put away for your pantry 
So there's tons of different ways, but that's just, just kind of get your, you know, your mind thinking about the possibilities that you, you don't have to be, feel like you're being left out of the cold, basically, and learning how to preserve your own food. We all know that we have to stretch our dollar so much further than ever before with this crazy, crazy inflation that's going on globally. So we want to make sure that we've got what we need when we need it to feed our families. Doing stuff like this is what's going to help stretch out your, your um, dollar. And, and then you're also going to feel confident, you know, a little more secure about said future that we're, that we're uh, coming up against. So not trying to be any kind of a fear monger or anything like that, but just know that there is going to be some sort of famine, some sort of shortages. I'm sure you've seen other videos talking about it. And, uh, I'm also going to be one that's going to be talking about it. There are ways to preserve, and this is going to be one of the one of the ways. So let's get canning some corn, okay? Okay, so I have my jars ready to go here. They've been washed and sterilized. You don't necessarily have to do sterilizing anymore, apparently, but I still feel like it's probably best to make sure that there's, you know, nothing left behind when you wash your your jars. So and I also put in a quarter teaspoon of uh, sea salt. And you don't have to add the salt if you don't want to, but it does help with preserving. Um, but it's not necessary, I'll say that. Okay, so I've got, like I said, a quarter teaspoon of salt in each one. This canner is going to hold uh, 16 pints. So we are going to uh, get these filled up with the corn and put them in the canner. Okay, we're going to put my funnel on top here. And we're going to, now these are still kind of frozen, but that's okay. They're all going to warm up at the same time in the canner. But we're going to fill these jars up to the first rim right here. So that's about an inch space. And then we're going to put water up to that rim. A little too many, too much. So just like that, you're going to hear one toe out there. Okay, so I'm just using regular water, regular tap water. I am, I'm well water. So we're going to the water in there. Now you're going to debubble it. Okay, so you're going to make sure that the bubbles, that there's no bubbles and just kind of mix around get in the middle to make sure there's no bubbles in there the water has now dropped so now you're going to top it up and you're going to do it again okay because we want to make sure that the corn is under the water so I may, I'm gonna have to take out a little bit let me get a spoon here Yeah, just a teaspoon. So as long as everything is under the water. Now I can add a bit more water to that. There we go. So it's exactly to the rim. Now I'm going to take a clean cloth or paper towel and I have a little dish of vinegar in, uh, in here. And we're going to wipe off the top in case there's any salt that might have uh, stuck to the rim when I put it in or any food particles, you just want to make sure it's nice and clean. And then we're going to take our lids. Now, unfortunately, I've also noticed that the price of jars and lids and all that um, are, you know, have also gone up because they know that we're all trying to preserve our own food. 
Anyway, you're going to take one of these lids. It's got a little rubber gasket there. And that's what's going to help seal it if you've never seen one of these before. Okay. And you're going to put it on top like so. Then you're going to get your ring. I got a basket just full of rings there from my purchases last year. But they're clean and washed. So then you're going to put the ring on top. And it's just going to be finger tight. Just as you start to feel resistance, that's where you're going to stop. Okay? Because we want to make sure that when this is pressure canning, the steam is what's uh, helping to eliminate the air out of the jar and it's uh, got room underneath the rim to escape. Then when we take out the jar and you hear a ping, like right now you're hearing this, but when you, when it's done processing, um, you're going to hear a little pop and that's going to suck in and then you won't be able to move this up and down like you can right now. Okay, so once that does happen, then your jar is completely sealed and you are good for many years to come to have this on your shelf. Okay, so we're gonna get these filled up, put this in the jar or in the can, move on to the next jar. So let me get all these finished and we'll bring it right back. Okay, so I've got my first row done. Now what I'm gonna do is you have to purchase these uh, separators separate <laughs> and stick it in there like that so there's nine nine jars in there you're going to put this on top and then depending on the size of, of, of uh, pressure canner that you have uh, you can do another row so that's what i'm going to be doing another nine so it'll be 18 pints going in of corn Okay, there we go, guys. I have my second row of uh, pints in here. So that means I've got a total of 18 jars in here. What I forgot to mention was that in each canner, there is a mark down at the bottom of the pot, which is probably about here. And that's how much water you're going to put in. You do not fill these up with water. I've heard many people think that they have to fill these up with water and that's not the case because now you're not using steam to make the air escape from these jars. So make sure that you look at the manual on your canner and read that and put the amount of water that they want you to put in. So I've done that and now I'm going to turn on the stove. I'm going to gradually let this warm up okay so i'm probably only going to put it on a medium medium high like a, like a seven and uh, let this gradually warm up we're going to put the lid on right now as well so hold on okay so there is an arrow on one on the top of the lid and an arrow on the handle you're going to line those two up which i did you're going to press down a bit and then you're going to slide it to seal it so now she's locked in you cannot lift this lid up okay so I'm gonna put this on properly here so what this is gonna have what's gonna happen is we're going to let this warm up this little spout here is going to start emitting steam you're gonna allow that steam to go on for 10 full minutes you have to time it Okay, so that's going to take all the air out of the out of the pot. Okay, so you're going to allow that to go for 10 full minutes. Once that's happened, now you're going to cover that spout. Some have 10, 15, 20 pound weights, depending on your area. You're going to want to go online and find out what your PSI your PSI, what does PSI stand? But I am a 10 pounds pressure, okay? So once that gets steaming for the 10 minutes, I'm going to put this weight on, and then this dial is gonna start climbing up, okay? I need to get it to the 10 pounds of pressure. Once I've got that done, 
I have to make sure that I keep it steady between 10, let me see if I get the, between 10 and 11 pounds of pressure, no more. Do not, you don't wanna go over if you're 10 pounds or if you're 15, don't go over or, yeah. <laughs> didn't know what direction I was in. But anyway, don't go over the pounds that you're supposed to be, your PSI. Now I'm gonna time this. I'm gonna turn down the, turn down my temperature because if I keep it on high, it's just gonna keep building more and more and more pressure and I don't want that. I wanna keep it steady. So most likely I'm going to turn this down to like a four, four to five to keep this steady at the 10 pounds. And I'm gonna time it for 55 minutes. Once that is finished, we're gonna turn the heat off and we're gonna let the machine cool off on its own. Do not try to remove the lid. Just leave it and let it all cool down. Let this dial drop down to zero. Uh, there's also a pressure indicator, I forgot to mention, that this is going to pop up as well while it is at the pressure. Let this drop, let the dial drop, all that before you remove anything, before you move your weight, before you remove the lid, all that stuff. All right, and then obviously I have a lot more to do, so I'm gonna get more jars canned up for another round. So I won't keep you for the second round, but at least to show you this first round. Okay, we're just about there. It's gonna start steaming here in a second. I get, like I can feel some of it trying to spot out here. I did turn it, the temperature up a little bit, like to max, I gradually moved it up as it was uh, warming up, so which is okay. So it is at max right now until we get this steaming. So it is starting to steam, I do see it. I know you guys can't really see it, yeah. Once this thing gets steaming, you know, continuously and you'll see pshh, like that, um, this will actually pop up, you can hear it. Yeah, so we're almost there. So like I said, once it starts continuously spouting out the steam, I'm going to set my timer for 10 minutes and let that steam out. And uh, once that's done, then I will put my weight on there and we will uh, show you how to do that as well. This is slowly popping up. I was hoping to get it before it did that, but it is not completely put up. Anyway, so we'll set the timer for 10 minutes and press start. So we'll let that go. Okay, so the timer's about to go off. Stop. Okay, so now we are going to grab the weight. We're going to stick that on there, like so. Okay, and we're going to let this now build up to 10 pounds of pressure. So it should go up pretty quickly, not, not all that fast, but as you can see, it's already starting to move. Then I will turn down the heat to about medium, medium low, probably four or five uh, on my stove, which is a flat top. Um, so, which can be unpredictable sometimes, and uh, I'm actually looking to get a coil stove or even a propane if we uh, decide to get propane in just for the stove. But anyway, that's another story. <laughs> so I'm going to turn that down, and then I'm going to start the timer again for 55 minutes. So these will process for a total of 55 minutes. While I'm waiting for that, this is my second batch. I had to, I ran out of these, uh, half pints so I need to go into uh, or actually the pints and I had to move into the half pints and uh, so but that's okay same processing time no big deal and I had a little bit left I could have probably done another pint but I, I'm not sure if I'm gonna have room in my canner so Joe's gonna have some corn tonight okay we're inching up to it now and I will turn down 
this till I'll start out with the medium. Sorry. Start out with medium heat. And you got to keep an eye on this. So do not leave this pot unattended. I repeat, never leave your canner unattended. You must keep an eye on this um, because they can, if they go over your pounds of pressure, they can explode. So I will give you a fair warning right there. Make sure that you do not leave these unattended and you keep an eye on your dial. Okay, so this will stay steady at 10 pounds of pressure for 55 minutes. Okay, we're at the countdown. Shut that off. Shut the burner off. Now we're going to let this cool off all on its own. Let this drop, the dial drop down. Let this pop, uh, this um, gauge drop down before we open up the lid. So I took the pot off the burner, slid it off to the side. And as tempting as that is, we're so close. You do not want to touch it. But even once I take the lid off, I'm going to leave them in the pot for probably a good five to, well, even 10 minutes, five to 10 minutes without the lid. Because the change in temperature from inside the pot to your environment uh, can play a role in how they're going to seal and if jars will crack and break. Now, I don't say that to scare you or to make you nervous, but not everybody does practices that technique about waiting five minutes before you take them out of the can. It's just me, so it's not really necessary, but you do wanna make sure that whatever surface that you're gonna put the, the um, jars on, make sure that you lay a towel or a dish, um, like a dish rack pad I use. Let me see here. I've got one separately, but this is what I use for when I do my dishes. So a nice thick pad. Um, I have one specifically for my canning projects. So I will lay that out on my dining room table and I will remove them and place them on top of there. I also take a towel and I drape the towel over top of the jars. Again, not really necessary, but I think it's an old school technique that I know my grandmother and, and other women that uh, I know that do canning, that's what they did. Um, they covered it and then left it there for the night. So don't touch your, your jars once you lay them out. Um, until the next day before you put them away in your pantry things like that Because what you're going to do is after the next 12 hours 12 to 18 hours you're going to find or what you're going to look for now is you're going to Touch the top of these and make sure that you don't hear any of this You want it completely solid so then before you put them away you're going to take these rings off. People think, well, how's it going to stay uh, sealed? Shouldn't they stay on? Some people, because we've got so many rings, they'll, they'll just loosen them and leave them on the jar. But you want to make sure that it's loose enough so that if, by chance, the seal breaks later on, you're going to know because the, because the, uh, the top is loose, like this, the lid is loose. And that way you're going to be able to keep an eye on your food going bad and things like that. So one thing that I experienced this past winter was my cellar got too cold. And with that, there was a lot of jars that were freezing and had frost on the top. So I kind of waited till that melted, really. And then I checked the jar to see if there was anything wrong with them. So if, if the seal broke or anything. If the seal wasn't broke, it was fine. It's just that they just got overly too cold. Um, some people would remove those jars and not take a chance in eating the food. 
We've tried the food after it happened and there was nothing wrong. Um, it was mostly like my tomato sauce and things like that. So it, it, it was fine. Um, we didn't get sick or, or anything like that, but it's entirely up to you if you want to throw those types of um, jars away. I find that if the seal is still on, the food inside is still good. That's just my way of thinking. See, now we're at zero, but this guy still hasn't popped down yet. So we want to make sure that that's completely pot, like dropped down before I remove any of this. Uh, once I get these cans out of here and placed on my dining table, I will bring you back so that we can take a look at the finished product because I have another batch to do. <laughs> so we'll see you in a second. Okay, so this is now down completely. Now I can remove this and we're going to remove the lid. Okay, we're going to do this very carefully. Make sure also that when you open this up, okay, so you're going to slide this across. There's still going to be steam inside, so make sure that you make the lid go away from you, okay? Get some oven mitts on so you don't burn your fingers and you're going to release. Everything's still boiling inside, as you can see with this, this jar here. But they're all boiling. So this is why I am going to wait a few minutes before I take them out of the can. But everything looks good so far. I gotta get Joe and use his muscles. I'm going to get him to carry the pot very carefully over to the dining table. <laughs> Heavy load. Hey, I've been trying to lose weight. <laughs> Me too. Just be careful, honey. Where am I We're going? We're going and putting it on the chair. Huh? I just heard a pop. You heard a pop? Very carefully. Put it on the chair. Watch your step and just put the pot on the chair. Yeah. I know, honey. I put that step there. Very carefully. Don't burn your arms. Yeah. Made it. <laughs> okay, these jars are popping like crazy. Kitty cat, you're gonna have to move. But that's what they look like. You hear that popping? That's ceiling. Daisy, get down. So there we have it, 18 cans of, or jars of uh, fresh corn from frozen. So you can be preserving your food by going to the grocery store without having a, a garden. Uh, mind you, of course it helps. Oh, we got a ping. Um, but you can always go to your grocery store and you can pick up these items and can them and get them on your pantry. Okay, so oh, there's another one. So thanks for hanging out with me, guys. I'm going to get started on the next batch. And uh, there's going to be another video where I'm going to do peas. And I'm also going to do, I do already have a potato video so if you want to see that just go back onto my uh, playlist I have playlists check out the playlists um, I've got everything kind of under the one category so canning and stuff so my how to can potatoes is also in that that uh, playlist so go check that out I love hearing that ping oh also I forgot so what I'm gonna do last is just cover it with a towel and leave them for the night um, so yeah, so hopefully they'll just keep on pinging and I'm going to get lots and lots of cans sealed. <laughs> so um, mind you, I will uh, just kind of say um, as, a, as a side note that sometimes they won't seal. And if that's the case, then you can just go ahead and eat them, you know, within the next few days, put them in the fridge, but make sure you get them ate up in the next couple of days, just like you would if you had cooked vegetables, you want to get them ate up. Um, and so, yeah, 
Anyway, um, like I said, I'm going to now get started on the second one. Any of the playlists for canning that I've done already, strawberry jam, uh, grape jam, things like that, preservatives, you can go into that playlist and you can see all the canning. I've also saved some other videos from uh, other YouTubers as a uh, kind of a, a guide for, um, or a variety for not only myself to go back and check out, but for you as well. So you may find a canner or another uh, YouTuber that uh, is inspiring to you. So make sure you check them out and um, yeah. So we'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for hanging out. Take care and God bless. Bye for now.